Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the Mechanics M1 International A Level at Excel, October 2022 exam. This question here is about a small ball which is projected vertically upwards with a speed of 29.4 meters per second from a point A which is 19.6 meters above horizontal ground. The ball is modeled as a particle moving freely under gravity until it hits the ground. It is assumed that the ball does not rebound. Find the distance traveled by the ball while its speed is less than 14.7 meters per second. Okay, so let's make a little sketch to illustrate the situation, which is always a very useful thing to do when you're dealing with mechanics problems. So here we have a, this is, say this is the ground. You have this object, which is certain distance above the ground, 19.6 meters. Okay, so it's 19.6 meters above the ground. So it's, it's projected from this point here, A. Okay, so say this is level with the point A. Okay, this is the point A. It's 19.6 meters above the ground. Okay, so that distance here is 19.6 meters. 19.6 meters above the ground. Now, it is projected upwards from this point here. So from the point here, it's projected upwards. Okay, so it goes up from here until it reaches the top of its flight. And then it starts falling and it falls all the way until it hits the ground and it doesn't rebound. Okay, so that's its path, like vertically upwards and then vertically downwards. Okay, um, it's accelerating due to gravity. Gravity is acting downwards, so that's the acceleration downwards. Its initial speed that it's given when it's thrown is 29.4 meters per second. And it reaches the top of its flight. Of course, at the top of its flight, it's going at zero meters per second. And then it falls down until it hits the ground. Now, it says, find the distance traveled by the ball while its speed is less than 14.7 meters per second. So we've got to think a little bit about this one. It's a bit different than the normal questions. So um, I want to find the distance it's traveled while its speed is less than 14.7 meters per second. So it's going to be going upwards, starting off with this speed, and it's going to keep slowing down. It's, it's going to get, the speed's going to get less and less until it reaches. There's going to be some point at which it reaches this speed. So I'm going to make a little line here to indicate when it reaches that speed. Just say it reaches that speed at this point, 14.7 meters per second. So just say that at this point, its speed is 14 point seven meters per second it's going upwards after this point of course the speed is going to be less than 14.7 meters per second until it reaches zero meters per second at the top of its flight in which case then it's going to start falling and it's going to start with of course it's going to its speed is going to increase now when it reaches back to the same point again it's going to be going down with a speed of 14.7 meters per second so we want to find the distance it's traveled, the distance, not the displacement, the distance it's traveled, okay, while it was in that situation when its um, speed was less than 14.7 meters per second. So what I can do here is I can split this up into a part where it goes from 14.7 meters per second to zero meters per second, okay, and then from zero meters per second. And then you're gonna have from zero meters per second until it reaches a speed of 14.7 meters per second. And basically, if I find one of these, the other one's gonna be the same distance, okay? So let's take this case here. We know we're gonna just use our SUVAT equations. We have constant acceleration. I'm gonna take up as positive in this particular case because we know that we are. Um, it was initially thrown upwards. So now um, we want to find the distance S from the point where it's going at this at this speed. Okay, so I've got S. S is, is going to be this distance here. U is going to be the initial speed, which is 14.7 meters per second. I'm not talking about from where it was thrown. I'm talking about from the point where it reached that speed, where we want to find 
how high it goes from that point. Okay, that's the reason why I'm, I'm taking that as my starting point. When its speed has reached 14.7 meters per second, I'm taking that as my starting point. And my final velocity is zero meters per second when it reaches the top of its flight. The acceleration is minus 9.8 because we're taking upwards positive and g x down. And t, we don't have t. I don't think we need to use what t is. So now I've got s and u and v and a to use because I need to find s. So we can use the formula v squared equals u squared plus 2 times a times s. Now v is 0. u is 14.7. So u squared is 14.7 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times s. So I can say therefore s is equal to 14.7 squared over 2 times 9.8. Okay, because I can um, just both, both of them will become negative, become positive. So that will give me the value of s in this question. And the value of s is going to be 14.7 squared over 2 times 9.8, both in the denominator, which gives us 11.025, uh, 11.025 meters. That's s. Now we want to find the distance it's traveled. So we can say, therefore, the distance it's traveled because it's going, it's going to be 2 times s because it's gone s up and then s down. It was traveling from there to there. The displacement was what we just found, but it's gone that same distance, the same distance on the way down until it reaches that speed again. So it's going less than 14.7 meters per second from this point until it reaches zero, and then from zero until it reaches this point again on the way down. And so that's going to be uh, 2 times 11.025. So we take our answer and multiply it by 2. That gives you 22.05. Um, 22.05 meters, which we can write as 22.1 meters, or we can write it as 22 meters. Both of those are acceptable for the, dis the total distance it's fallen, which is 2s. Okay, the total distance it's moved, not fallen. The total distance it's moved when it was going less than 14.7 meters per second. All right, now for part B, it says find the time for which the ball is moving with a speed of more than 29.4 meters per second. Now, it's thrown with a speed of 29.4 meters per second. It's going to keep slowing down until it reaches zero. And then it's going to start from zero as it, on its way down, and it's going to speed up. Now, at the point when it reaches back to the same level from which it was thrown, which is here, okay, the same level from which it was thrown, it's going to be moving downwards with a speed of 29.4 meters per second. Okay, and it's going to travel a distance of 19.6 meters until it is brought to rest by the fact the floor is in, right? So for that 19.6 meters, it's going to be traveling at a speed of more than 29.4 meters per second until it hits the ground. All right, so we want to find the time it took in this region here. Okay, so if we take this as our starting point, if we say from A down to the ground, right, then what we can do is we can um, take that as, if we use SUVAT, the SUVAT equations, we know that S, now I'm taking down as positive as it's moving down from, the, from A, starting, moving downwards, right? I'm going to take down as positive. So therefore, my distance is 19.6 meters below A. As I'm taking down as positive, that's going to be positive, 19.6. Now, the initial speed, the speed with which it passes through A, it's moving downwards at 29.4 meters per second. So I'll write that as 29.4. And now the final velocity, I don't know, so I'll, put, I'll just keep that as V. The acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity it's now it's falling downwards so the gra of course the g is, is is going to be negative anyway gravity acts downwards so it's downwards as we're taking down as positive we'll take a as positive 9.8 and we want to find the value of t okay so now we have s u v a and t all right so we're going to use the formula s equals u t plus a half a t squared and we're going to find the value of t for which it's going down from that point to the point where it 
it's reached 19.6 meters below the ground where it's going to hit the I mean below a where it's going to hit the ground so s we're going to take as 19.6 u we're going to take as 29.4 t is what I have to find so I'll keep t like that plus a half times a which is 9.8 times t squared so we end up with 19.6 equals 29.4 t plus 4.9 t squared so we can rearrange this we have 4.9 t squared plus 29.4 t um, minus 19.6 equals zero so we can solve this using the quadratic formula if we wish to all right so we have minus b which is minus 29.4 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is 29.29.4 squared minus 4 times a which is 4.9 times c which is negative 19.6 and all of this is going to be over 2 times a which is 2 times 4.9 so if we put that into our calculator we should get um, two values of t and I think one of them won't make any sense let's have a look minus 29.4 29.4 Okay, I'll start with plus, plus the square root of, we have 29.4 squared minus 4 times 4.9 times um, negative 19.6 and that's going to be over 2 times 4.9. Alright, that gives us 0 0.60555, 0 0.60555, and it also gives us, if we now make that into a minus, I think that's a, the one where we'll have a negative time. So that won't actually make any sense. You have a negative, what was it, sorry? Negative 6.6055, negative 6.6. 0 0.055 so therefore we can say that the time is equal to 0 0.606 seconds or if you want to 2sf 0 0.61 seconds that is the time for which it was falling or moving with a speed of more than 29.4 seconds this minus six seconds is six seconds before this point it means like when it's down here imagine it could go backwards right so that's 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 that that answer doesn't make any sense for us it's just a solution of this quadratic equation it doesn't actually make any practical sense of course we can't have a negative time so we take the positive answer which is 0 0.606 to 3sf or 0 0.61 to 2sf either of them are acceptable because we used a uh, g in our calculations which is to 2sf all right there's part b and then for part c it says sketch a speed time graph for the motion of the ball from the instant when it is projected from A to the instant when it hits the ground. So a speed time graph doesn't have a negative side. It's always positive. Okay, so you're going to have here your axis. Okay, that's your um, x-axis and your y-axis, of course. The x-axis represents the time and the y-axis uh, y represents the speed. Okay, and we're dealing with speed, not velocity. Right, so this is speed, this is the speed, and this is the time. Now, it starts off being projected with a speed of 29.4 meters per second. So that's going to be its initial speed. So I'll put that up here as, let me, let, let me put it as there's 29.4 meters per second. And it's going to, um, speed is going to decrease until it reaches its highest point. Okay, which is going to be when the speed is zero, okay, after a certain number of seconds. If you want to know how many seconds it is, we can say, okay, let's use V equals U plus AT because it says we have to show clearly where it meets the axis. So I've got to show what this point is. So this is at the point when the speed is zero. The initial speed is 29.4, and it's, we'll take A as um, negative 9.8 times T. So T is going to be basically 29.4 divided by 9.8. Okay, that should give us the time it, it was. So we got 29.4 minus 
29.4 minus, sorry, divided by, what am I talking about minus? What am I doing? Okay, so divided by 9.8, and that gives us 3. Sorry, so that's 3 seconds. So I know that that's 3 seconds when it reaches 0, and then what happens, it increases in speed as it starts to fall, and it falls until it reaches the point where it um, hits the ground, so that's going to be, it says that we don't have to show any of these other times, but that's three seconds, and then that will be another three seconds, and that will be another 0 0.61 seconds afterwards. By the time it reaches here again, we don't have to actually show this, but just for you, illustrating this for you, that it's going to be back here, this will probably be six seconds, three seconds for it to go to the top, six seconds to go back to the same level where it was thrown from, and that will be a further 0 0.6 seconds for it to reach, hit the ground. Okay, we don't have to show that, that's fine. Okay, so there we have our answer. It just says show um, the where it meets the axis, which is 29.4 and 3 seconds. And there we have the answer to this question. There we have the answer to this question, which is question number 5 from the Mechanics 1 paper from October 2022. Um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist, which is over here. Um, that's a playlist for this particular paper. You'll find it in this region. Other questions from this topic of uh, vertical motion under gravity can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.